I love coding with Crucial, but Cloud Code is undeniably the best AI coding agent out there right now. In the beginning, I was a bit hesitant to switch over to Cloud Code because there were so many features inside of Cursor that I really loved. But by now, I've been coding almost every day for two months with Cloud Code, tested out all the different features and workflows that you find out there in the internet, and over time found out what really sticked with me and made me completely fall in love with Cloud Code. That's why in this video, I will provide you everything you need to know about Cloud Code from just starting out to becoming a pro, all the best practices that make a huge difference in terms of quality and speed of coding. So if you're coming from Cursor and want to make the switch to Cloud Code, or if you already started using it, by the end of this video, you will feel like a pro and only want to use Cloud Code from now on. Let's do a quick setup of Cloud Code. I don't want to spend too much time here. Most of you probably already have installed it, but setting up is as easy as going to the Cloud Code website of Anthropic and then just copying this command over here. And then there's a lot of different ways where you can run Cloud Code. You can even just run it in your terminal. You can run it in tools like Warp, but I really prefer running it in Cursor uh, itself because then we still have this nice coding environment. We see all the files, we see all the edits we're making, and that's just the way I recommend and um, the way that really sticked with me. So we just need to bring up the terminal, paste the command, hit enter, and it runs you through the full installation, does everything for you. It's as easy as that. I'm not doing it here because I already have it installed, but once you have installed it, you can always start it by just typing Claude. First time started, you will be asked if you trust this folder, you can proceed, and then you have Claude code down here. Now, running it down here in the terminal is not my preferred way. So you can come up to the extensions over here and search for the Claude code extensions. And then also installing it over here. And once you have installed it, you will see this new run Claude code icon over here. So let's click it. And then we have it up and running over here. Now, my preferred way to work with it is just have something open, but I always put Claude to the file. So I have a nice, a big view of uh, Claude code and you can even hide the cursor chat. So then you have like a, a full clean window where you have Claude code running over here, but you can also open up files over here. Now, if you haven't been asked to during the setup process, you also need to log into Cloud Code with your uh, credentials. So you can just type in, but probably you have already been signed in during the process and then just hit enter. Now for this, you need to have an active Cloud account. There's a few different pricing options. There's the $17 plan that everyone uses for just chatting with Cloud inside of the browser or with the Cloud app. But if you're serious about coding, you at least need the $100 plan. Uh, even behind that, if you um, proceed, there's like a $200 plan, which gives you kind of the, the best ratio. Like with the $100 plan, you get 5x of the amount than the Pro, which is like roughly five times a Pro plan, like the, the $20 a month. But with $200, which is just two times more, you get even 20 times more. So that's the best ratio, but it depends. Like um, if you're just coding casually, I recommend a $100 plan and you can just get started with it, see when you get stuck. But I have the $200 plan and I basically never run out of credits and I code every day with Cloud Code. So let's authorize Cloud Code again. And then you can switch back over here to cursor. I'm gonna just close uh, Cloud and open it up again. So we all up and running. Now, a few quick navigation tips. Let's compare this with Cursor. Like the chat we have down here, it looks a bit different because it's a CLI, it runs in the terminal, but over time you will 100% get uh, used to it. Now, if you're used to Cursor, you're used to switching between different models and picking all of them. But in Cloud Code, obviously we just have the Cloud models, but Cloud is anyways the best models for coding. So if you wanna select a model, um, you can type in model. And over here, you can pick between the different uh, anthropic cloud models. Now, by default, it enables the Opus for one model for 50% of the usage and then jumps down to Sonnet for, uh, for the rest. So a usage period is basically just one week. And for 50% of your credits, you're using Opus one, which is just slightly better sometimes than Sonnet four. So if you're on hundred dollar, I wouldn't recommend running Opus all the time. Uh, so you can like this option here is safe to use. Like I never ran out of uh, Sonnet four credit so far. But even for me personally, I right away pick Sonnet because I found that Opus is sometimes overthinking. I'm anyways just working incrementally with the tool. And for me, this just works perfect. So I'm selecting Sonnet over here. Now, the next thing you should ensure is since we're having this extension over here, 
The advantage than just running it in the current terminal is you can't connect it to cursor. This should also happen by default, but just to double check, you should type in slash IDE. And then over here, we, it's, you see it as already identified cursor as the IDE, and you always see this blue thing down here that confirms cloud code is connected to the IDE. That just gives you the advantage that it knows, like if you're in a certain file over here, it always knows in what uh, file you're in. You can also reference files, all of the good stuff. Now, if we compare to cursor again, we have these different modes over here, the ask mode where cursor doesn't make any changes to the code base. It just comes up with a plan, gives you answers, but doesn't change anything. And the agent mode that actually makes the, the edits. We have something similar, but in my opinion, even better in cloud code. If you type shift and tap, you see we can go through these different modes. The first mode is the edit mode that similar to the agent makes all the different edits. Second one is plan mode. And this again, doesn't do any edits to your code, but I find it better than the ask mode over here in cursor since this is really prompted to give you a nice plan. So I recommend if you have a bigger feature you work on or basically anything, you first go into the plan mode, then it will take all its resources of fully thinking it through and then proposing you a plan that you can later on accept or give feedback on. And once you're happy with the plan, only then um, you can hit enter and it automatically goes into the edit mode. Very sweet. Now, if you've coded a lot with AI, you know, it's always good to give it some boundaries, some rules. And in cursor, obviously you have the cursor rules, but there's something similar again in cloud code, which is the cloud MD file. So a file that it reads with all your rules, with all your insights, and that is pasted basically before every prompt you insert. So it has a better picture of, yeah, basically all the rules and boundaries you want to give it. Now you can start it from scratch, but you can also just type in slash in it. So it takes some time to read through all of your project files, understand your code base fully, and then craft its own um, rules or its own instructions in the CloudMD file. So I'm giving it a second over here. You see the last task is already to create this CloudMD file. And once it is finished, we see the Claude MD file already appearing over here with all its commands, the project structure. And right now this is like a super empty project. So there's not much it had to analyze. So what you can do from here is adding your own rules and everything. But uh, below this video, I paste you my typical, like my standard rule set that, that I always use for Cloud Code. Uh, in this instance, I'm just gonna replace everything over here. So it contains certain things like the tools I'm usually working with, telling it is, it is an expert in that. So for example, Superbase, a Shad CN component library, Tailwin CSS. I prefer to run packages with PNPM myself and then giving it some good structure where to put certain files, especially since I'm working with Superbase a lot. You don't need to read through the full file, but that's basically the starting point I'm always working with. And I just project specific add some rules over here. Now for everything you set up with Cloud Code, it is super important to understand the hierarchy between the user level and the project level. So everything that's just in your code base over here, like the Cloud MD file is just for this project, right? If you have a, a different project, it doesn't know your Cloud MD settings because there might be a different one. So for Cloud MD, like the rules, it, in my opinion, is always makes sense to put it over here in on the project level. But the things we're gonna set up next, I don't wanna set them up for every single project. I want to set them up once and basically have them available for all the projects I'm working with. So if you wanna add settings to the project, always be in the project level, but to open up the global user folder for Claude, you can just open a new folder inside of cursor and then on Mac it is command shift and period. And you see it shows us some hidden folders over here and we need to open up the dot Claude folder. Now this is then a new project and you see we have basically the same structure over here. This is the default cloud.md settings that you have basically on a user basis, right? So anything you put over here, it will be applied for all the products. So you could go ahead and insert a certain general rule set over here. And then on the cloud.md file on the product level, just insert your project specific rules or instructions. Now, when it comes to actually coding and making edits with cloud code, one thing that annoyed me extremely in the beginning was Yes, there is this edit mode over there, which says accept edits. However, still for every command it runs, by default, it will first ask for your confirmation, which is like super annoying. By default, it is not at all like cursor over here where you have the agent mode that really goes through all the edits and then only pings you when it is done with all those changes. 
in cloud code, it is every time asking you, hey, you want to run this? You want to run this? And in the beginning, I was just sitting there. Yes, yes, please run. Yes, please run. But there's also ways to make cloud code really be more agentic and really auto accept a lot of those edits, which there's one setting down here. If you start Claude with this command, Claude dangerously skip permissions, it goes into this mode that you can bypass by any, basically any permissions, and then it will never ask you for any confirmation. So you type in something and it will then run by itself and auto accept everything. However, in my opinion, that's also a bit too far on the dangerous side because it could even go ahead and delete your whole product folder or delete files on your system that you're not even working on. Chances are very low, but we want to avoid that. We want to give it a certain boundary it can work on and also customize that. So I basically never use this bypass permissions mode down here. There's, by the way, no way to accept it normally. So we just have the accept edits and the plan mode over here. But the cloth settings allow you to specify certain commands where it should go through and where it should not ask for your permission. And the way you would add it into your project would be to create a settings.local.json file. And there's certain commands you can insert over here to uh, bypass. However, I don't want to set this up for every project. That's where our global user folder comes back again. So let's go back into our global folder. And you see, I already have the settings.json over here. And one of the settings you can set up in this settings file is allowing a certain set of permissions. I listed down here all the commands that I want Claude to execute by itself without getting my permissions. So this involves like reading files, editing files, writing files, certain bash commands that are not critical in my opinion. But I also have a certain set of permissions that I don't allow Claude before getting my permission, right? So these are all commands where it, in my opinion makes sense that it asks me first before it does it. For example, like deleting files, I want to ask if I want to do that or stuff like pushing to the GitHub. I also, before it does that, I always want to confirm it or like even <laughs> resetting GitHub, like really destructive commands I put in the file over here, which gives me a good and secure way to work with Claude. Like this allows around 95% of the times it, it does edits and the 5% that really need my confirmation I put down here. Now, permissions is just one setting that we get, can give over here to Claude. If you have already listened closely, you might have noticed this little sound when Claude stopped. And this was also in the beginning for me very annoying since I gave it all the permissions to basically run and Claude code takes a little bit of time to edit stuff than cursor because it uses many more resources. It also gives you a better output. But with all these permissions given, it, it feels really agentic and it runs a lot of the times just by itself. So when I was coding, I was already switching to a different window, was working in the browser, and then I never really knew, okay, when, when is it finished? When is it ready for my next input? Cursor has this little setting where you can turn on a notification when it's finished, but Cloud Code doesn't have it by default. And that is where hooks come in. If you open up hooks over here, you can see all the different settings you can do, right? Pre-tool use, what should it do before it starts running? What should it do after it starts running? There's, you can again, customize this fully. Like for example, post tool use, always push to GitHub or something. But there's a hook that runs on stop on my side that is play this file over here, which is just a, a sound file that comes default with macOS. So every time it stops, I want it to play this sound, which is basically all it needs. Now I also have it for the notification. The stop sound only works whenever it's completely finished, but notification is basically when it asks you in the middle of doing something, for your confirmation. So with the stop sound, if I exit out over here and say, say hello, we can hear now this little thing when it is finished. And then I can come back to Cloud Coach, see what it has done, give my next prompt, and then switch again watching YouTube videos or something. No. So yeah, this little hack saves you a lot of time switching between different windows and always checking is Cloud Code still working or does it already wait for my next input? super useful. So these permissions and hooks is something that I set up over here in the user file because I don't want to set it up for every project. But what I want to set up in every project is a MCP. So if you have the Superbase and MCP, this is one project being specifically linked to one Superbase project. Setting up an MCP in Cloud Code is also very easy. You just need to add a new file, call it .mcp.json. And again, if you want to have MCP servers that are globally, go back into your user folder and set it up there. So for the Superbase MCP, you can just come to the Superbase docs for MCP. And down here, we already see Cloud Code. 
And then basically all we need to do is copy this over here and then paste it into the MCP JSON. And then your MCP is set up. Of course, you need to replace these variables with your actual project, with your actual personal access token, but that will fully connect your Superbase MCP to Cloud Code. For that, you would also need to restart Cloud Code. And then it already recognizes this new MCP. And then I'm going to trust it. And if we type in now slash MCP, we can verify the Superbase MCP is connected. Now, next, I want to talk about the two main points that made a huge difference in terms of prompting Cloud Code. So what's built into Cloud is it recognizes certain levels of effort it should take. So it recognizes if you type in a prompt and then type in think hard, think harder, or ultra think. Those are basically the three levels. And if you have a bigger task and type in ultra think, it will really take more resources and take more time, analyze more code before it comes up with a plan. So this is a super useful prompt that gave me like a huge improvement in the output Claude gave me. Second is if you work with Claude and keep working, keep working, oftentimes the results get worse because all of the recent conversation history is always being put up before you type your new prompt, which can really clutter up the context window. So I recommend whenever you work on something new, use the slash clear command and this will reset the context window and the next prompt you set in is completely fresh and that really helps Claude just to focus on what you want to do now without thinking of all the thousand things you, you discussed before. Of course, if you make incremental edits and want to keep what's already been discussed, keep working. But for a new feature, I always use the slash clear command or even if I recognize it sometime, like we had discussed too much, but I don't want to lose what we have discussed. I'm, I'm still somewhat related to this. Then there's a second command, which is slash compact, which will go through all the recent chat and it would automatically put out a summary. And then you just have this summary uh, in the context window instead of, again, working with all the different things over here. Now, one last point, you already saw me working with these slash commands here quite a lot, and these are already pre-built by Claude. But if you do certain workflows, oftentimes you can also modify these for yourself. And you can again go on the project level for just project specific, but I wanna give you an example on the global level over here. So you just have this commands folder down here, and then inside of the commands folder, you can give certain instructions yourself. So you just create whatever you wanna name your command, .md, inside of the commands folder. And then you have a description and here you put the whole thing you wanted to do, right? And this then allows you inside of Claude, if I type in slash PR, this is a custom command of me. Of me. Like I don't wanna, whenever I have a pull request, describe what steps it needs to go through. And um, even if I just say, hey, um, create a pull request, this might not be enough context. So I've created slash PR slash pull request, which just by typing that, it has this whole context that so knows, hey, I first need to check the current context, then create the pull request, analyze any merge conflicts, auto merge, uh, if safe. That's custom instructions, I save it. Another one I gave it because I also do that quite often is to refactor. Um, you can build in these arguments over here. So if you type in add arguments, this will also dynamically um, pull in basically what you type. So for, if I type in slash refactor, and then the dashboard page. Then it knows, hey, I need to refactor the dashboard page to improve, and then it does all the all the steps. So that's how you work with custom commands, super useful and kind of a hidden feature, but if you code a lot and have somewhat the same workflows quite a lot, that also saves you a lot of time. Now, even one step further than custom commands are cloud sub-agents. These allow you to basically create a new, whole new identity of a specific agent of cloud, for example, for security, for performance, that just specializes in one thing. But for that, I created a separate video, which you're gonna find over here. So thanks for watching this one, and I will see you in the next one.